Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Today, I'm here in the basement pepper nursery. You may wonder why I'm holding two red solo cups with no keg in sight. Stay tuned, and I'll clue you in. And I'll sing a new song about it, too. But first, a quick update on this year's hot pepper crop. Let's get started. Seems like all I've been doing lately is transplanting pepper plants. As of today, March 26th, I've transplanted 273 seedlings into three and a half inch pots and 10 others in larger pots for a total of 283. And I still have a dozen or so younger seedlings left to transplant. I can only fit about 200 total in our front yard. So I'll be selling many of the remaining seedlings at this year's neighborhood plant sale. It's part of my quest to get more spice avoiding Minnesotans growing and enjoying hot peppers. In order to have room for so many plants, I've expanded my grow space to another table on the other side of the basement. I relocated a couple of my existing grow lights to light this table with a little help from two tiny COB lights I picked up several years back. To replace the lost light in the main area, I bought a new grow light from Hippogero, which uses a combination of four COBs and 16 conventional LEDs. I'll cover this new light in more detail in a lighting episode I hope to film in the near future. As many of you know, I'm switching over to organic growing media and nutrients this year. The plants in these larger pots are all Carolina reapers, subjects of an experiment comparing results from organic and chemical nutrients. I planted these about a month before the main batch of seeds. In one tray, I used organic potting mix, while in the other, I used the same brand of potting mix in which I grew all of last year's crop. That mix has chemical fertilizer added. I followed suit when transplanting the seedlings into the larger pots. For the organic plants, I mixed four parts ProMix organic potting mix with one part Fischner organic fish manure compost. That's also the ratio I used when transplanting the 273 other seedlings into three and a half inch pots. Jim White from Fishner has been nice enough to supply me with his product for testing, and he's also agreed to supply more for a new giveaway that we'll be launching very soon, so watch for that video announcement. I'll tell you a lot more about Fishner in that episode. I always add a little extra perlite to the mix. Perlite is a mined mineral that's approved by the National Organic Standards Board for Organic Agriculture. But be aware that some brands of perlite, like miracle Grow, have been enriched with chemical fertilizer. Obviously, you don't want that for organic gardening. So make sure that the brand of perlite that you buy is just tiny shards of popped volcanic glass with no additives. I was really surprised to learn about how perlite is processed. And you might want to read about it too. I'll put a link in the video description. As of today, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference in how the two groups of plants are doing. But the organic group may be just, on average, a tiny bit larger. I'll continue to monitor them and report back in future episodes. Now, let's talk about the double cup method for growing hot pepper seedlings. In short, I have nothing against it. It's just not for me. No double cups, no double cups, no double, no double, no double cups. You one plan. I see it everywhere today, but I'm just not down with it. For me, one plant per pot, and 18 in a tray is the only way. No double cups, no double cups, no double, no double, no double, no double cups. Maybe I am getting old and set into my ways, but if it ain't broke, I'm not sure why. If you think I'm going to rant about double cups, I assure you I'm not. Many people I admire, including the esteemed Kangstar, use this method. 
I'm always happy to learn and adapt. But as far as the claim benefits, I feel like I've ticked many of the same boxes with my current procedures in ways that are more efficient and less wasteful of resources. People who germinate seeds in solo cups often put a Ziploc bag over the top to create a mini greenhouse. Me, I just put one dome over a tray of 72 cells. If I'm understanding correctly, the main reason people use double cups is because the bottom cup acts as a reservoir to feed and water the plant. I use standard sized nursery trays with a groove bottom to accomplish the same thing. Of course, you'll want trays without drain holes. I found some on Amazon made from a thick plastic that should last for years. Link in the description. I like using three and a half inch seedling pots because round or square, they fit snugly in these trays. They're not as tall or as tapered as solo cups and there's no insecure feeling when you move the trays. I like to rotate the trays daily so that each plant gets the same amount of light. If you're like me, you probably reuse your pots or cups year after year. At least I hope so. Solo cups are made from number six plastic. I don't know about the rules where you live, but here in Minneapolis, number six plastic and styrofoam are not collected by our recycling program. All the new pots I buy are number two plastic, which is easily recyclable. So that's why I personally don't use the double cup method. Please don't flame or troll me because I mean no disrespect. And it gave me a topic for a new song. To me, one plant per pot. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and tap the bell to receive notifications as we post new episodes. We now have Seven Pot Club logo t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, and more, all in a variety of colors. If you're interested, follow the lead of Old Man Easy and head over to sevenpotclub.threadless.com. And for even more Seven Pot Club, follow our daily updates on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob. Alexa, turn on grow. Okay.